Welcome to the Mac Ruby, uh, Ruby Motion presentation. I'm I'm very happy to be here today, and um, well, just one thing: I really like Seattle, so it's a very nice city. But you guys have um, <laughs> but you guys have too many uh, coffee shops, so I I can't I can't go to each of them. So we need to return eventually. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is a presentation about Ruby Motion. Uh, just a few um, things about me. Uh, yeah, Shane just uh, said it, but I, I'm a long-time Ruby uh, enthusiast. Uh, I've been using Ruby for, uh, for about 10 years. Uh, before doing Ruby, I really liked Perl as my uh, favorite high-level language, but I realized Ruby was a better alternative, so I decided to stick with Ruby. And I, I work on a few things about, on Ruby, like the Ruby GNOME 2 bindings, which are um, Ruby wrappers for the, the, all the APIs of the GNOME uh, desktop. Then I did Ruby Coco, which is a bridge between Ruby and the Mac runtimes. I did a bridge between Ruby and AppleScript called Ruby OSA, but I think it's dead now. Uh, and you shouldn't use it anyways. Uh, but uh, Ruby, uh, when, when, when we did Ruby Coco, um, the goal was to make sure that you could write full Mac applications in Ruby. But it turns out that it, turns out that it wasn't possible with Ruby Coco. So there, there were so many problems, performance and stability issues, just related to the fact that it was a bridge, some sort of uh, middleware between two separate frameworks. So we, I stopped working on Ruby Coco, and I, I did Ruby, Mac Ruby, which is supposed to be a better Ruby Coco. Uh, but Mac Ruby is, uh, is, is different in the sense that it's a true Ruby implementation on top of Objective-C. So it's no longer a bridge, so it, it works much better. Um, yeah, I'm a programming language nerd, so I like, <laughs> I like programming languages. It's, I really like that. Uh, my last employer was uh, Apple. I worked for a few years there on uh, iLife, OS X. I work on the Unix layer, of, so it's basically what powers uh, Macs and even iOS devices these days. Um, yeah, I, I, was, I was responsible to uh, uh, introduce Ruby gems in, in Leopard. So, but uh, I'm not responsible for the fact that uh, Mountain Lion ships with Ruby 1.8. So it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. So you need, you need to blame the, the other guy now. Um, but I left my job at Apple to do a startup. Uh, I left my well-paid job in Silicon Valley to, to do a company, um, which is crazy, right? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it reminds me of what Shane said yesterday. So uh, quit your job and do something uh, better or different. Or so yeah. So if you if you are uh, working on, I mean, for uh, your employer and you think you could do something different, uh, I think you should take the chance and do it. Especially a startup is very uh, very funny. So um, Ruby Motion. Um, so I think that you guys probably heard about Ruby Motion. Uh, how many people heard about Ruby Motion here? Pretty okay. Oh, there are people who don't know what Ruby Motion is. So uh, Ruby Motion is basically Ruby uh, in your pocket. So that's the title of the presentation. So <laughs> so it's basically a tool chain that lets you write. Uh, application for uh, iOS devices, such as iPhone or iPad or uh, even iPod Touch, but using Ruby, only Ruby, exclusively Ruby, so no other uh, languages. So why would you want to do iOS applications? I mean, you guys are already Ruby programmers. You probably uh, use Rails on a daily basis. Um, so why would you want to do uh, mobile apps? Well, it turns out that it's a very recreative market. Uh, at the latest WWDC, Apple announced that they sold more than uh, 365 million IS devices since the very beginning. And they say that they, they also say that there is something around uh, 400 million iTunes accounts. So, uh, of course, there are more iTunes accounts than IS devices because people use iTunes on different platforms, but it's uh, it's safe to accept that uh, uh, most iOS devices are actually connected to the, uh, to the iTunes store, to the App Store. So there is a huge market and a huge opportunity to, 
to create applications. And, uh, there is, and because of that, there is a huge demand for iOS uh, developers, especially in the, in the consider C business. But at the same time, it's also possible to make uh, pretty good money just by uh, working on applications, publishing your apps in, in the App Store. And a great example is Paro. It's uh, an email client uh, written by, by friends of mine in France. And uh, so they, they, they sold the company to Google. But um, their investor uh, leaked some information on Twitter. And they said that Sparrow was generating uh, something like uh, $60,000 uh, per month, which is nice for, a, for an email client. So it's perfectly possible to, uh, to do uh, to make pretty good money just by doing applications of the store. And there is no technical reason why a Sparrow could not have been written in, in Ruby with Ruby Motion. So what Ruby Motion is basically uh, Ruby as a language, but re-implemented on top of iOS. It's also statically compiled, so it's, it's very different from uh, the Ruby implementation you probably use uh, today. Uh, the entire tool chain is actually based on the terminal. So there is no UI, you don't need to learn anything new, you just get, you just get to use the terminal. And you also keep using your favorite editor, so it doesn't come with an IDE. So that's, that's actually the design goal. And finally, there is an amazing community. So I'm gonna go through these five points very quickly because uh, there is only, uh, we only have uh, 30 minutes. So the runtime. A very, thing, a very interesting thing about Ruby Motion uh, is that it's uh, both Ruby, Ruby, Ruby Motion is Ruby, uh, and Ruby and Objective C are actually using the same uh, technologies, the same foundations. So what does it mean? Is that uh, when you when you use Ruby Motion, when you create a class, it's actually going to be uh, it's actually going to use the same machinery, the same foundations. As if, as if you create a class in Objective-C. So a class in Ruby is the same thing as a class in Objective-C. Uh, it's actually using the Objective-C runtime under the covers. So when you create a method in Ruby and you pass an instance of that class that responds to that method to an Objective-C API, the Objective-C API can call that method as, it, as if it was written in Objective-C. So that there is no bridging thing happening. Everything is truly native. And uh, at the same time, uh, the built-in types of Ruby, such as string, array, and hash, have been uh, rewritten on top of uh, foundation types. Foundation is a framework that ships with iOS, and uh, the framework comes with um, the basic types like NS strings, uh, NS arrays, and NS dictionaries, which are the same thing as array, string, and hash in Ruby. But in Ruby Motion, we decided to rewrite these classes based on, the, on their foundation counterparts, so that when you use an API in Objective-C that expects an NS string, you can simply pass a string that you create in Ruby. So again, this is really for performance reasons. So we, we, don't, we don't want to convert objects when you try to use the APIs of iOS with, from Ruby. And this old, this old design is actually, what well, I call it the unified runtime. There is only one runtime when you use Ruby Motion, it's the Objective-C runtime. So it is, it is very different from uh, bridging technologies where you tend to have a different programming language with a different VM, a different garbage collector, a different set of classes, and a different object model. And then you get uh, the native platform that you want to access. And this is, this is very similar to our experience with Ruby Coco. And Ruby Coco was that, that sort of thing. It was a bridge between MRI or CRuby, which is called these days, and the Objective-C runtime. It was very painful to keep uh, both object systems alive at the same time and caching objects when you cross the bridges. And here with Ruby Motion, it's, re it's really native. So an application written in Ruby Motion is truly the same as an application written in Objective-C. If you look at the code that's generated, it's, it goes into the same APIs at the very end. Uh, but you would say, why, why should I use Ruby? I mean, if, if there is already Objective-C, you could just learn Objective-C. Um, the thing is that Ruby is much more concise. Well, I'm not gonna uh, explain that to you. You already know that. 
But this is very this is basic Hello World in Ruby, um, a basic class and with an accessor, and you can initialize the class and then you can call the, the same method. And uh, the same thing in, in Objective-C would have been written like this. So as you can see, it's already twice the code, more or less, for, for about the same thing. I mean, just uh, printing a message in a terminal. So there is a lot of boilerplate code that you need to write when you create a class, when you create an accessor. Of course, you, you also need to keep two separate files, one for the, one for the interface and one for the implementation. And uh, it, gets very, uh, it can get very bloated even if it does only the same thing, calling this nslog method at the very end. We have, been, we have, we have users of RubyMotion reported that they, try to convert, that they, are, they actually converted their uh, iOS applications from Objective-C to Ruby, and they say that generally they, they, can, they, they get rid of 50% or 60% of the code at the very end. And that, that's only when using the same API, so that's not even using a, a DSL or, or a library just using the same APIs, but removing all the craft or the, the boilerplate code that Objective-C forces you to write. Uh, so that's a, that's a very cool example. So um, RubyMotion lets you call into the Objective-C APIs natively, but you can also use C APIs because there are pure C uh, libraries and frameworks in iOS. And one of them is OpenGL. OpenGL is pure EC, so there is no objective C stuff there. And that's an example of RubyMotion calling it to OpenGL. So I haven't written this because uh, OpenGL is very, I cannot understand OpenGL. Uh, <laughs> it's very tough. <laughs> uh, but um, so basically what's happening here is that it's actually calling the same C functions of OpenGL but from Ruby. So this uh, GL clear color is actually a C function that you can call it as if it was a Ruby method. And the compiler is going to, create, to generate some sort of stub that will call the C function. So, and uh, all the constants that you see like GL underscore color underscore buffer underscore bit, it's actually a C enumeration uh, in the header file of OpenGL. So if, if you're familiar with, with a C, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's also described in the header files of OpenGL. Uh, but uh, it's, it's available in Ruby Motion as a Ruby constant. And then you have all these uh, magic things like sometimes in OpenGL you need to pass a, a magic cookie, which is a, a value, and you cast it into a void star pointer. So um, yeah, I'm not going to explain, but it's basically a hack to, to pass some sort of magic value instead of a real pointer to an object. And in Ruby Motion you can use the pointer magic cookie method to do that. And so the whole thing is working. I mean, it's, uh, I think it's a, it's a very simple game that shows a cube that rotates and you can click on it and it divides and some sort of things. Uh, but it works, so I was very surprised to see people using OpenGL in, uh, in RubyMotion. <laughs> so let's take a look, let's talk about the compiler now. Uh, by the way, this is the LVM logo, which is the most awesome logo ever. <laughs> Awesome, right? <laughs> uh, so basically, uh, it's, it's called static compilation. I think that Remotion is probably the, the only Ruby that is statically compiled. Maybe, I don't know, yeah. Probably, yeah. It's one of them, at least. So the idea is that uh, we take Ruby code and we generate machine code at the end. And the machine code is completely pre-compiled. There is no more uh, evaluation, interpretation when you run the code, and everything is self-contained. So that's the goal. And in RubyMotion, in Ruby um, applications are always uh, statically compiled. So when you use an an, a RubyMotion app on your device, it's always going to run the code that you wrote, and you cannot evaluate code at runtime. We disabled that uh, for, uh, actually for reason, because I'm not really uh, comfortable with uh, the Apple guidelines about that. Um, so it's basically stat it's really Ruby, but all statically compiled. But ho how does it work exactly? Well, it's uh, it's Doug's <laughs> Doug, Doug, Doug programming computers. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. So I'm, I'm going to explain a little bit. So first, we start with Ruby. So uh, here we can uh, create a class, Hello View, which inherits from UI View. It has a method, and so that, that's, that's Ruby text, right? 
and the compiler is going to process the code into a syntax tree. So in a syntax tree, or more, uh, as, as known as the AST, is basically a huge tree of expressions inside the code. Um, so here, for instance, we have, uh, so here it's, it's basically an array. I'm using Ruby here as a, as a repre representation a syntax, but uh, the compiler is not written in Ruby. It's basically an array. We start with a class, hello view, then we have the super class, then we can, well, we have a method, so it's the def n. Um, we start with a new def n tree, so it's a tree of trees. Um, and then we have the drawback symbol, which means that we are defining the drawback method, and it goes on. The entire code is uh, compiled into this, this data structure. Um, if, you, if you're not familiar with ASTs, there is a gem uh, called um, parse syntax, parse tree, no parse tree, yeah. I think it was written by um, Zen Spider, it should be somewhere here. Okay. <laughs> you mean the you mean the one line extension? Okay. Uh, but there, there, there is a okay. Anyway, but there is. I mean, if you want to play with ASTs, there is there is there are uh, gems, and they will give you these kind of things inside IRB, so you can see how Ruby is actually compiled under the scene. So it can be interesting. So then, from the from the syntax tree, we. We actually convert it into LVM IR. So IR stands for inter Intermediate Representation Language. So we are, we are actually going to compile the syntax tree into, into this language. So LVM has its own internal language that is, um, so it, it let us, uh, so it's basically a, an, assembly, an assembly language, but it's a platform or architecture agnostic, more or less. Um, so we actually uh, implement the, the syntax tree using this language. And first, the great thing about LVM is that there are so many optimization passes that you can apply on the IR. Uh, LVM comes with a, a huge load of optimization passes, and we apply a, a great deal of them. For instance, we can eliminate that code, we can reorganize if statements. We have, uh, we have optimization for constant lookups, inst instance variable uh, access. So we, we wrote also most of the optimizations, but we, we can actually reuse a lot of the LVM ones. We also have an optimization for, a, a, which is called TCO, a tail call optimization. So if you have a method that ends with a call to the same method, we are actually, the compiler, we actually uh, remove the call and we actually jump to the, the beginning of the method. So you can do a functional programming in Ruby motion, which is great. Uh, but the, the great thing about the IVM IR is that it's, uh, it's agnostic. So from it, we can target uh, different platforms. And so we only target two platforms, Intel 32-bit, which is a platform when you run the simulator, and ARM for the, for the devices, the ARM, ARM versus, uh, versus 6 or versus 7. So we get assembly there, and so I'm not, I'm not going to explain what it, so it's basically a machine code and it's compiled to machine code right after. <laughs> so at the very end, you get a true machine code from your original Ruby source code. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah. so, this app, so this is an app we, I wrote with a friend. Uh, it's called Mustachio. Uh, it's a very basic app that actually uses uh, face recognition APIs in iOS to add a moustache to all the faces it can find in a picture. Uh, so this isn't my kid, by the way. This is my, my son, Alexis. <laughs> uh, sadly, the application is no longer in the App Store, uh, not because it's written in Ruby, but I, I forgot to renew my Apple uh, account. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually used my wife's account for this, app, uh, for this app, and I forgot to renew it, and so they, they, they removed the app. Which is weird, right? I mean, they could have, I mean, I didn't even got a, an, e an email saying, well, we'll remove your app. So anyway, so I'm going to resubmit it, but um, you can find the source code on GitHub. But the, the, the most interesting thing uh, about this app, at least in this context, is the, the application size. So perhaps you can't see it, but the size is 0 0.9 megabyte. So it's less than one megabyte, and it's a, a Ruby motion app that ships with the runtime and all, all the source code of the app. So this is, this is really great. 
So you can, I mean, the compiler doesn't add much bloat, much, much, um, much fat to your application. So let's talk about the tool chain now. The tool chain is uh, uh, all based on the terminal. So you get to use the terminal to create new project in Ruby Motion, and then every project is based on rake. So there is a rake file, and if you want to change the configura configuration of the project, you just edit the rake file. So it's very simple. And then the rake file has a, a, a few rake tasks by default, and one of them can push the application on the simulator so that you can see in real time what's happening. Uh, you can also push the application on, on your device if you have an iOS device connected for development uh, with a USB. Or you, can create an, or you can create an archive, an IPA archive for a, an App Store submission. But it's all based on Rake. <clears throat> Sorry. So, and people have been saying, wait, 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 you are using the terminal and Rake, what about Xcode? Uh, I'm not sure if you, if you guys know what Xcode, Xcode is, but basically Xcode is the, uh, it's Apple's IDE, so it's basically the, the IDE Apple wants uh, you to use for iOS development or Mac development. So it's, a, it's actually a great IDE for Objective-C. It's very nice. It's really optimized for Objective-C. But for Ruby, it kind of sucks. It's very sad to say that. The first, the, the editor is not extensible, so there is no way to add uh, functionality. There is no debugging support for Ruby or other languages in Xcode, so if you want to write a Ruby debugger in Xcode, you can't. There is no plugin interface, no API. Uh, the Ruby support of Xcode is also very poor when it comes to uh, syntax. Uh, it's, it's very, very bad. I'm pretty sure they use regular expressions to colorize the source code. And, um, uh, I don't know. For instance, when you have a Ruby file in Xcode that has a regular expression, and inside the regapps you have some sort of keyword that's defined in the Ruby language, like if, then uh, the whole source code will be messed because Xcode will think that the if, the if a token inside the regapps is actually a statement in the syntax. So. It's very bad. Anyways, uh, I don't, we don't think Ruby is a great, uh, and we don't think Xcode is a great uh, environment for Ruby, which is why we prefer people to use their own uh, editors. And at the same time, uh, in Xcode, you get to use uh, the IDE to, to create uh, core data models and user interfaces. So there is, there is, a, there is a way to use Xcode to create uh, you, the, the database of your application, which is based on core data. So basically, you can create the tables with your mouse, you can create the fields inside each table, the re relationships, and at the end, Xcode will generate a binary that will ship inside your app, and the binary will be parsed at runtime by core data. And the same thing happens with user interfaces. You can use Interface Builder, which is uh, some feature of Xcode, and uh, you can create the UI with your mouse, you can drag views, create actions and outlets to connect the UI with your code. And then at the end, it generates also a binary that will be parsed at runtime by UI keys. But I, I'm not really comfortable with that because um, it's a binary. There is no way to see what's happening. It's too, uh, and there is no way. I mean, when you put it in source control, and it's very easy to break things. For example, when you, it's very easy to, with your mouse, to forget to disconnect something, and then you just break something. It feels very magical, like this. <laughs> I have been using Xcode for a very long time. Uh, before it was even called Xcode, it was called Project Builder. Um, and I always feel like this when I had to use Interface Builder or, or Core Data. It feels uh, too magical for me. I prefer, I prefer to see what's happening. So that's why uh, it's, it's perfectly possible to use Core Data or to create user interfaces programmatically. And I think Ruby is a great language for that because Ruby allows layered abstractions. You can easily create domain-specific languages and at the end, you can, you can very easily create very complex UIs in code. Or you can also create uh, database entities in code. The perfect example, of course, is uh, active record in Rails. You, you, you guys don't use a uh, use user interface to create the database. You, you, you can use Ruby directly. Oops. Ah, yes. And it wouldn't be a real screenshot of Xcode without the, the crash window. <laughs> <laughs> 
because it crashes all the time, sadly. <laughs> Uh, so in, in Ruby Motion, you get to use the editor you really like. So personally, I use Vim. Uh, so and but there there are support for other editors. And if you go to the Developer Center, you will see that you can install plugins to have, for instance, uh, auto completion of the APIs. Uh, the iOS SDK has I mean these APIs were designed for Objective C, so they are super long names, and it can it can be very uh, tedious to type all the characters. So we have, there are plugins to have auto-completion. There are also plugins to uh, interface with the tool chain so that you can, with shortcuts, uh, run the simulator, push on the device. So it can be very handy. So there, are, there is support for Vim, but also for uh, TextMate, uh, Sublime Text 2, which is another editor. Uh, Redcar, that's the fourth one. It's actually very nice because it's a Ruby editor written in Ruby, using GRuby. So if you have never uh, used Redcar, I recommend that you give it a try. It's very cool. It's all open source, and uh, it's very nice. And then there is uh, Emacs, which is some sort of operating system. <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's not an editor, I don't know. I, I have never used it because my, I never had a computer fast enough to load it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just got the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, I just, I just got SSD, so I, maybe I can try it now. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, there is support uh, for motion in Emacs if you really like it. But you should, Vim is much better, I think. No? <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> Uh, so there is a huge community around RubyMotion. It was very amazing to see so many people uh, using it the first days. That's a nice transition. Uh, there, there, there is more than five, 500 projects on GitHub. So most of these are samples. People are just working with it and doing a separate things. But there are, there, there are also libraries, DSLs. And for instance, uh, the support for these text editors were written by the community. So that's really amazing. So I'm going to show a few uh, libraries or uh, projects written by, by those folks. And a, a fir the first one, which is very interesting, I think, it's called Teacup. So it's a, it's a DSL to uh, create user interfaces uh, with RubyMotion. So they, they follow uh, the, I don't know, the CSS way of uh, styling the user interfaces. So they, they created the DSL to, uh, to style uh, basic, uh, basic elements like text fields, search fields, these kind of things. And so on, on the first part of the code, you, you can see that they provide a custom style sheet for these elements. And then at the second part, they create a view controller. And then they, they can apply the style sheet that they defined uh, earlier. So I assume that it's going to use the same style there. So it's, it's very interesting. And uh, their DSL is actually uh, very, I, think it, I don't think it's mature yet, so they are still iterating on it. OK. Bubble Wrap is another project. Uh, it, it aims at wrapping all the iOS uh, APIs using Ruby. Uh, using a pure, it aims at providing pure B abstractions. So that's what I was talking about. In this very specific snippet, uh, the, they wrapped all the HTTP and the JSON support of iOS in Ruby. So it feels like Ruby. W when you read this, it's actually using the iOS APIs. So it's a library, it's a layer on top of iOS. So it can be very convenient, and they have wrappers for a lot of things. So bubble wrap. Another one is for motion. It lets you write this kind of UI, which is very uh, common in, in uh, uh, on, on iOS, on iPhone applications. And if you want to write this by hand, it's super hard. You need to create a table view with custom cells. And if you're familiar with iOS development, you, you know that it's very hard. And some, some guy created this DSL, which looks like a hash. It's basically a huge, uh, a huge hash, and then it generates wh what's on the, on the right side. So it's very cool. And I don't think I will have time for the demo, I'm sorry. Uh, but if you, can, if you have any question, you can ask me, or I can show you a demo later. And that's all. RubyMotion.com.